Morning, sir. I just saw your signs. I just wanted to see what you guys were, <coughs> excuse me, saying or, or doing. Or appreciate you stopping. Right? Yeah, yeah we're, I'm just curious. We're from the Abolition Society, of Little Elm. My name's Matt. Pete. Pete, nice to meet you. Yeah. We're just standing out here, shining a light on what's going on here. Uh, you know, abortion is the number one killer here in Texas and the number one killer in this country. I agree. And unfortunately, in the schools, they're not teaching those things. They're teaching that it's a, an acceptable thing. Um, over 60,000 children were murdered here in Texas just in a year. And uh, we're out here just to shine a light on what this That's what this is the pamphlet we're giving out to people, um, the students. And it's the truth that they've been lied to. They've been lied to that this is just a blob of cells, a chunk of flesh, and it's not. It's a baby created in the image of God <coughs> by the hand of God. And we're just here to talk to the students and whoever else wants to talk to us about the Holocaust that we're living in the midst of. <coughs> right now, we're, uh, we have a bill going forth in the state, HB 948. And we ask you uh, to call your legislator and ask them to support it because uh, it's a bill that bans abortion totally. It's an abolition of abortion bill. For here in the state of Texas? Here in the state of Texas. Oh, okay. I, I, Protect, individual states, can can they ban? Yeah. Abortion? Okay. Yeah. See, I, I was just confused on how that worked. I thought it was just like a federal you know, no, like see, a decision that, that just affects either the whole country, yes or no. Well, it, it affects the whole country in that the Supreme Court, first off, cannot make laws. That's not a part of their duties. And we are supposed to stand against unrighteous laws. They went against our Constitution. They went against God's Word. And they declared that these children were not worthy of life. Just like they declared back in 1856 that African Americans weren't worthy of life. So then currently, every state abortion is legal, correct? Correct. But, but then each individual state can pass legislation to make it illegal in their state? Well, see, what happens is each state have been passing these pro-life laws for 44 years now, saying you can kill oh, a baby. Oh, no, that's, oh, okay. that's the Texas oh, okay. thing oh, okay. that we're doing. Um, they're passing laws that say, well, you can kill a baby as long as it's not 20, 20 weeks. Okay. Or you can kill a baby as long as they see a sonogram. But all these laws, they are then appealed to the Supreme Court. And the federal government says, no, this is unjust. But the Supreme Court doesn't have that right. And this bill, that, this HB 948, that was written in the state of Texas here by uh, Representative Tony Tindahol in Arlington, um, states very specifically that all life will be protection, protected from conception. Any attempt to murder a life from conception will be treated as murder. And it also says if, the, if the, anybody sues us and takes us to the federal courts, we will ignore them. So this is a, a bill that's going to be voted on? or, or what Yeah, right now, right it's, now? It's, it's, uh, it was written. It has seven co-sponsors. Co-legislators have sponsored it. And it's going to be coming up this legislative period. Uh, in fact, we're having a big rally in Austin on February 25th, Saturday. And we're asking people to come down and stand in support of this. We're asking people to call their legislators and ask their legislators to get behind this and support it. Because this is murder. And it is murder from conception. And God's word is very clear on murder. People want to ask God to bless this country. There's no way in the world he can bless this country. We have the blood of over 60 million children on our hands. We think the Nazis bad people. They only killed 11 million people. We've got over 60 million people on our hands. And we're covered in the blood guilt of each and every one of them. What kind of, uh, what kind of response have you guys? Have you guys got people coming out here and, and talking with you and different things? Or? Yeah, this is only our second day here. We'll probably be here a few weeks. Uh, we go from school to school and we talk to people. That's it. You know, I mean, just like I'm talking to you. I'm not mean. I'm not yelling at you. We're just talking. I mean, that's what we're supposed to do. The Bible says, come, let's talk, let's reason together, says the Lord. And that's what we're doing. We're trying to open people's eyes up to the fact that children are being murdered. One out of every three women will murder their children. And that doesn't start after college. That starts right here. It starts right here. 
And God's word is very specific that his hatred is upon the hands of those who shed innocent blood. And we are responsible to bring forth the truth in all things. And that's why we're here. We're just here to shine a light and open eyes because the schools, Planned Parenthood's in the schools saying this is okay. You know, defund Planned Parenthood. That's not the answer. All they do is they go to another clinic. Clinics that we stand out in front of Dallas aren't Planned Parenthood clinics, they're other clinics. Defunding Planned Parenthood is it's just like putting a Band-Aid on a gaping wound. It's like, you know, my leg got blown off and I put a Band-Aid on it. Okay, it, it's, it's not righteous. And that's what the pro-life movement does today. They try to regulate child sacrifice. And that's what this is, it's child sacrifice. Back in the Old Testament, people would sacrifice their children to the God of Molech, to the God of Baal for blessings upon their families, for blessings on their crops, for blessings on whatever, okay? And we're doing the same thing today. We offer up our children blessings on our careers, blessings on our families, because they're an inconvenience. And it's child sacrifice, pure and simple. Now, when you come out to different places, whether it's schools or clinics or stuff, what kind of response do you get from the actual places you go to? Are they pretty much just kind of leave you alone or do they give you a hard time or are they just kind of... They it it varies. We were at, uh, we, we, we took the month of November, uh, of December and January off. We were at uh, Reedy High School before that and we were at um, Whitfield High School. Whitfield High School, it was about 40, 50 counter protesters standing out here. Uh, you know, it, it all depends. We'll talk to anybody um, because it, it has to have a light shined on it because they have been lied to, just like this book says. This is an innocent child created in the image of God by the hand of God with a plan and a purpose from God. And unfortunately, we decide we would like our plans and purposes to be more important than others. You know, if, if, we were, if, I, if I decided I wanted to kill you, people would be upset about that. But what makes you any different than a child in the womb? In the eyes of God, nothing. Nothing at all. Murder is murder. Whether it's from the, the moment of conception or we're 40, 50 years old. And actually the laws state, the laws in this state state that it is murder, but they have added exceptions, except, except for abortionists and women seeking abortions. And those are going to be struck down. You know, it's unfortunate that, you know, it, it, it has gotten to this point, but the federal government does not have jurisdiction over us. They can't say, you need to ignore the Constitution. You need to go against what God's word says. They can't, they can't do that. They don't have that right. I mean, look at the marijuana issue. How many states have said, sorry, federal government, you're wrong. And they've legalized and decriminalized marijuana. Now, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying I'm for it or against it. What I'm saying is people will stand up to the federal government for what's important to them. And what could be more important than what's happening to 60,000 children a year right here in Texas and over a million children a year right here in this country? Like I said, it's the number one cause of death in this country. Two babies every minute. You've been standing out here five minutes, 10 babies have died just in the, in the time you've been standing here. And we've, we've started to treat it as healthcare, reproductive choice. And it, it's not reproductive choice. Reproduction has already occurred from the moment of fertilization. That is an innocent child being led to the slaughter. And God's word says that we are to defend those being led to the slaughter, that we are to practice pure and undefiled religion. And that is to rescue the widow and the orphan in their distress. And each one of these kids is an orphan. There's, their parents go in there and sign a piece of paper handing you permission to kill their child. What kind of bizarre world is that that would do that? But that's why we're here, just to shine a light, let people know yeah. this is happening. And, you know, and I'll ask you to call your legislator and ask them to support HB 948 because it will ban all forms of abortion from the moment of conception, whether it's in IVF clinics or it's in plan B or it's in surgical abortion or it's in chemical abortion, all from the moment of conception. And it'll be treated exactly as it is, as murder. And it'll be called exactly what it is, it's murder. 
See, if we say that it's okay to do it to here, but we, we won't do it after 20 weeks or we won't do it after, that's just ageism, that's prejudice. That's saying, oh, your age determines. Well, then that line tends to get pushed further and further back. You well, know, whatever that, you know. If it's an age, arbitrary it, man's line. Yeah. That's like, like I said, it, you know, back in the 1800s, we, we drew a line and said, well, African-Americans aren't people. In fact, the Supreme Court said they're only three-fifths of people. That's what allowed them to be owned for their own good. That's what the Supreme Court said. And the same thing with the Jews and the gypsies and the homosexuals in World War II. The Nazis said, we're going to, these are less than people, they're vermin. They're a blight on society, so they kill them. And we're doing the same thing today with our children. You see, this is what happens when man decides he knows better than what God's word says, and even what science says. These are people. I mean, from the moment of conception, those chromosomes, the sperm, and they come together. That's an individual. And that's, you know, what we're trying to shine a light on. That God's word is the word we stand on, okay? Man's word will constantly change. Oh, blacks aren't people. Oh, well, now blacks are people. Oh, Jews aren't people. Oh, now Jews are people, okay? Just because we say something doesn't make it right. That's why you have a standard, and that standard is God's Word. And God's Word declares that all of these children are created in His image, not just the ones we, we deem worthy to kill. So in, uh, in Texas right now, uh, is, is there, like you were mentioning earlier, is there a, uh, uh, so far along to like a cutoff? The 20 weeks. Place? 20 weeks is the cutoff, so anything mm -hmm. after 20 weeks they can't do currently here in Texas? Right, but that's also arbitrary no, 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 because the, the, the ultrasound the person can look at it and say, oh, this baby's 20 weeks. The baby could be 21 weeks. It could be 22 weeks. And, and the ultrasounds are being given by the people that are killing children. Where do their interests lie? I understand. I'm just yeah. asking what the... You know, what, that... What it was yeah, here. but they, they keep striking them down. Like last year, the pro-life lobby passed a law saying that the clinics have to have certain access to hospitals and emergency and admitting privileges and all this other stuff and immediately uh, ACLU sued them in federal court federal court struck down the law and the state of Texas said oh okay this bill that Tony Tinderholt wrote it says specifically in there that if they sue us in federal court we will ignore them we will not even acknowledge them because they don't have that right this is not a federal issue this is a state issue these children are being killed here in the state of Texas against the Constitution of, of Texas, the Constitution of the United States, and nobody can tell you to disobey. When I went in the service, I swore to, to defend and uphold the Constitution. And every person that takes office does that and then breaks it by upholding these things. So, you know, we're just here to shine a light on, I mean, it is, it, it is a holocaust that is happening in this country. And we will not escape judgment for it. The blood guilt of 60 million have already been shed. That will not go away. But we are to obey God and not man. We are to stand up and do what's right, to seek justice and mercy. That's what God's word says. Are you a Christian? I am. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you could check all these things, you know? What did Jesus say is the greatest commandment when the, the scribe asked him, oh, you know, what is the greatest commandment? That we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then we are to love our neighbor as ourselves. And in this is summed up all the law and the prophets. And then the scribe said, well, who is my neighbor? Okay, and that's basically the response we get from most of the churches. Because they're just as thick into it as everybody else. One in three doesn't stop in the church. And in fact, Planned Parenthood's own statistics say that 70% of the, the people they see for abortions are church-going professing Christians. And then after that, that um, when the scribe asked, who is my neighbor, that's when Jesus talked to him about the Good Samaritan. And this is what we're doing here. We're exposing this. And what are you going to do? Are you going to do as the priest and the Levite and ignore it 
turn your eye and walk away? Or are you to do as the good Samaritan who bent over and took care of his neighbor and brought him to the inn and left money for him to be cared for? That's all we're here to do, is to shine a light on the truth. So do you guys go throughout the whole state? Or you guys no, we're the Abolitionist Society of Little Elm. Oh, we do Elm. Little Elm and Frisco, but we also go all over the country. And like I said, the end of February, we'll be down in Austin for this big rally at the state capitol. Tony Tinderhole, who wrote this bill yesterday, well, not yesterday, the day before, was placed under state protective custody because of all the death threats. Yeah. Um, they, he was placed under state protective custody yesterday huh. because of all the death threats he's receiving because he is treating murder as murder. And those who support murder, what else are they to do? They're going to threaten murder. Huh. I'm surprised here in Texas. I thought Texas would have been a lot more of a pro... Pro-life pro state, state, right? You know? Pro-life state, yeah. And in fact, I wrote to my senator, Jane Nelson, she wrote me this letter back. I asked her supporting. I called her office. I asked her to support this bill, get behind it. And she said, I'm one of the most pro-life senators there is. I helped pass the heartbeat bill, and I helped pass the 20-week bill, and I helped pass this bill, and this bill, and this bill. And they're all struck down. Because it, it is a game. It is a money-making game. The pro-life movement is just as involved and just as guilty. Because they are have turned it into... A living. I mean, it's been going on 44 years. If, we, if this is what's been going on for 44 years, when do you stop and say, we're, we're going in the wrong direction? It has become a political football. And they just kick it back and forth. And people make a living doing this. And it's time to stand up and say, no more. God will not bless a country that says it's okay to kill a child if. If you can actually say that it is okay to kill a child if, then you go against God's law. And it doesn't matter what exception you call for. And that's what we're here to do. It's just yeah, tell people when, the when truth. you get objections like this lady that just came by in the truck and she said something, I'm assuming negative to you when she came by right now. Uh, is, it, is it objecting? Do they, I mean, do they clarify what they're objecting to? Is it you being here at a high school is it is it the images it's, it's is that it the message? it's is the it... images it's the message it's okay. yeah you know. it's all things i mean yesterday we had a pro-life woman out here who said god is love god doesn't hate anybody even though god's word is very specific says his hatred is upon the hands of those who shed innocent blood god hates evil okay but she refused she said we were doing it all wrong because God is love. God doesn't hate anybody. And she actually stopped some of the students. And this is a pro-life woman, pro-life Christian. Stopped some of the students from coming over here and speaking to us. She kept them over there. And she told them, you know, not to come over here and talk to us. See, Jesus said in John 3.18, 3, 19, that darkness hates the light. The light is coming to the world, but darkness hates the light. And it flees from the light because it likes its sin more. And that's the truth. You know, people like their sin. And we're standing here shining a big bright light on this sin. That is the Holocaust in our country. I mean, really, you know, when, when you think about it, you know, I do this all the time. And I tell the students this, too. I, I tell them, when you're in there, I said, when I was in high school, I used to sit there and just look at the clock and wait for the bell to ring. I said, now here's an exercise. Every minute that ticks by, no, two babies just died. I do it the same thing, same thing on my clock radio. You know, I, we had a friend that was out in Portland two days ago doing the same thing at a school. A woman came out with a bloody maxi pad and ran by and shoved it in his mouth. This is what it is. Yeah. Oh, he was at an abortion clinic. He wasn't at a, uh, a school. People love evil. Yeah. You know? And that's all we're here to do, is to shine a light. Why do we use graphic images? Jesus used the most graphic image there was. He hung himself on a cross. He gave himself up willingly and hung himself on a cross. Yeah, I, had, I had heard a story about... Uh, uh, Rosa Parks being inspired 
to sit uh, in the front of the bus was, was coming from seeing a image of a uh, black guy who had been lynched in the south mm -hmm. and how that image was very graphic and people were talking about you know you shouldn't show that because it's very graphic but she was saying how that graphic uh, graphicness of that picture brought it to her attention of really what is going on and that kind of mm -hmm. inspired her to, you know how so many I, people I there's tell us that well at least those images are all fake they're all fake that one there that baby was murdered down in houston by charles carpen you're talking your 20-week ban that big baby was 23 weeks. Mm -hmm. He got a slap on the wrist. See, when the Nazis, when they liberated the camps, Bradley, Eisenhower, um, Patton, the first thing they did was they made the people from the surrounding communities walk through and see exactly what happened. Because you can't say you didn't know. You can't. And, and, and you know, I, I ask the same thing to you that we ask to a lot of other people. What, what does your Christianity look like in a culture that kills two babies every minute? Is it go to church on Sunday and raise my hands and I vote? That is not what God's word says. James, look at James. What is pure and undefiled religion? It is standing and rescuing those who are being led to the... Not, uh, that's, that, that's not James, but to practice pure and undefiled religion, that's James, is to stand for the widow and the orphan in their distress. We have over, what is it, 13,000 kids in a foster to adopt program? Yeah, kids that are actually uh, just going to age out because nobody wants them because they're too old. Everybody wants babies. Yeah. Uh, in the midst of... 3,000 kids in foster care, but 13,000 of them. Like, our one daughter, she's been to like seven foster homes and it ended up in an RTC, which is a, like a drug treatment program. You know, it's a reg residential treatment center, you know? And uh, she was seven. Everybody else, all the other girls were teenagers, you know? But uh, it's just another symptom showing how far the church is in America. Like, there's 30,000 churches in Texas. 60,000 pastors, over 60,000 pastors. 70,000 pastors, yeah, yeah, in Texas. 13,000 kids, like, let's just forget about abortion. What about the ones that are alive right now that aren't being taken care of? Let's get, it'd be so easy if Texas pastors just said, hey, you know what? This is wrong. You know, we need to practice true and undefiled religion. This is a problem. It shouldn't be like, hey, if anybody feels called, we have all these abandoned orphans. It shouldn't be like that. It should be like, look, community, we need to adopt them. You know, like, we need to do it. And it would just get done like that, you know? Um, but, you know, then they say, well, you're judging us. It's like, oh, we're trying to help these kids, man. Like, you know, I have six that were foster kids that we adopted. And I uh, put out a video. And just hearing these kids' hearts, it's like, how do we, how do we ignore them? I mean, they're like real people, you know? It's like if you were starving right now, why wouldn't I feed you? Yeah, well, would my response be, well, I'll pray for you? Or once a year, I'll take up a collection? So, we, yeah, we just asked the churches to, like, to help, man. Like, help these kids, you know? And they're like, oh, you guys are like Westboro. You're like, I will think of us as you will, but will you think of these kids? You know, like, do we have some responsibility here? And, uh, you know, like Frisco Grace, I think it was, they stepped up and did a whole, like, foster to adopt program. Heritage. Heritage, I think. Was it Grace or Heritage? It was Grace. Grace? Heritage is Emilio. That's Heritage Grace. I get them all confused. Yeah, Grace in Frisco, you know, Frisco Square. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, praise God, that's awesome. And that's all we're here to do, is just ask people to be Christian. Nothing more, nothing less. Yeah. Well, it's always ironic that, you know, everybody talks about being inclusive and, you know, everybody having their voice heard, but then they shut out certain voices, you know. So I think regardless of your view on anything, it's always good to hear point and counterpoint and, you know, have 
have that. And I think that when, like you're saying, a lot of a lot of people don't realize maybe that this is going on, or the extent of what is going on, or if they think these images are fake. See, you know, I mean, look, human being. Yeah, you, you can't you I can't mean, get away from that's it. That's the question. If is it is it a human being or not? If it well. is, it's murder, right? Well, it, it, it's not a question, number no, I mean, one, if you believe in God, and number two, if you even believe in science. If you even believe in science, yeah. is it a question? If a sperm and an egg came together on Mars, they would declare life on Mars. But on this country, we declare life less valuable, life less worthy. I mean, also, if you if you kill a pregnant woman, isn't that two counts of murder? Yes, it is. Yes, so it is. It just seems kind of contradictory to, you know. And we're, and we're not, we're just trying to follow Christians. Christians, let's do what's right. And those that aren't Christians, then we share the gospel with them. You know, if someone says, well, I don't believe in God, I think abortion's okay, we don't argue abortion with them. And we talk to them about God. Like, well, why don't you believe in God? That's important, you know, like the gospel will change hearts and minds. We just have a fake Christianity today that says we can grow fat in the day of slaughter and ignore the evils of our time. We can do that as long as we go to church every Sunday. You know? I mean, people look at the, the Christian churches in Nazi Germany and they're all like, oh, what evil, wicked people. How did they let this happen? How did they not stand up and speak out against it? We have the same thing. We have the same thing here. And that's all we're doing, shining a big bright light on that which everybody wants to keep hidden. Because if it's not hidden, well then we gotta deal with it. We don't wanna deal with it. We'd rather just keep it hidden and just in case I get my girlfriend pregnant, well then, we can get it taken care of quietly. Or just in case I can't get pregnant, we can go to our pastor and our pastor will tell us that IVF is okay. Even though for one baby, you know, about 15 to 16 die in the creation of that one baby. It's, you know, it's just the truth. Yeah. Jesus said it is the truth that will set you free. But the fact of the matter is, it's also the truth that condemns you. When Jesus said in John 3, 17, I did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. He said that for a reason, because the world was already condemned, has been from the fall. He came to give them the light. And those who come to the light will seek him and seek his truth. Those who hate the light will remain in their sin. I don't want to hold you guys up. I appreciate you talking to me. You guys have a uh, website or anything? Or? Go. Uh, you on Facebook? No, I'm not. My wife is. Abolition Society of Little Elm. Abolition Society. Uh -huh. of Let me give you a card. And on the paperwork, there's abolishhumanabortion.com. Okay. That's that one. And that yeah, on the pamphlet, projectfrontlines.com and abolishhumanabortion.com. That's us. Okay. All right. Well, good deal. I appreciate you guys talking to me. Thank you. What was your name? Pete. All right, Thank you. I appreciate you coming out hey. and finding out what's up. Absolutely. God bless you. You too. Did you guys read the stuff I gave you yesterday?